Volunteer positions, campaign manager, volunteer coordinator, get out the vote, scheduler and campaign treasurer. Uh, find out who your friends are. This is, this is in critical. Building coalitions can make or break a campaign, which means you have to go out and talk to the people that think the way you think. Now, I'm, I'm a big believer in 60 percenters, 70 percenters. You know, if, if prime example is libertarians. I've worked with a few libertarians in the past. Libertarians believe about 60% of what you believe, and you're going to have a little problem with dope. But you know that. So on any issue that concerns you with medical marijuana, you're not, going to, you're not going to agree on anything. But when it gets down to fiscally responsible, you're going to agree on those issues. And that's a coalition. Uh, this is where you look for coalition small business people. They're fiscally conservative. They made a payroll. They know what the economy's like. They know what needs to be done to fix their problem. Churches, if you're socially conservative, you should have people in your, talking to you from their churches, encouraging their church people to get involved in what you're doing. There's a big problem with doing it from the pulpit, but you can have meetings. You can have meetings about anything you want to have a meeting about. Oops, I'm sorry. Where am I? Oh, there we go. Sorry. Uh, African Americans, they're socially conservative. If you have several African Americans in your organization, ask them if you can meet with business groups, because there's and, and talk to them and find out what you have in common and what you can do together to move a conservative agenda forward. Asian Americans, physically conservative, socially conservative. Talk to the Asian Americans. Hispanic Americans, socially conservative, a lot of them are also physically conservative. So again, talk to groups. These are generalizations. I mean, you can get on, you can make a list of just about any type of group in the phone book. Find out if they would appeal to what you're doing. Get somebody from the group to become part of your organization. They would take you back to the group. Make an announcement, hopefully, get you on the data. On your way there? No. As a candidate. Voters registration, we talked, I didn't really talk about this. We've kind of passed this part by, but generally, early in a campaign, you get involved in identifying voters, voter ID. Who are your voters? Who are your voters? How do you get to your voters? Once you've identified, Conservative voters and independents, though that's the group we generally start to work. You don't spend a lot of time with the opposition because now's not the time to educate anybody. Now's the time they're either leaning your direction or they're not. You have to find the people that will vote on your behalf in your direction and talk to those people. And you're building locking lists. You want to you put out well, a knock on their house or call their, their phone number. Those lists are available. How to contact voters. You know, people don't realize it takes about seven contacts before you get a voter to come around your way of thinking. So it's not once, it's not twice, it's seven times as a rule of thumb. A number of ways you can do it. You can have somebody knock on the door and say, Hi, I'm working for, for instance, Scott Kirkland. You know, I'd like you to have you some information, like you know about Scott, and hopefully you will get your support. That's one contact. Campaign signage, the guy drives down the block and sees a sign. Uh, direct mailings, leaflets, you know, handing out leaflets on the train as it goes by. I would love to leaflet that train. But, uh, you know, for your candidate, email, as I mentioned, phone banks, robocalling, those, everybody hates robocalling, but if they hear a name, I am calling for so-and-so. Even if they hang it up, they heard, hi, I am calling for so-and-so. If there's a more, more name ID, paid and unpaid media, paid media, of course, is buying advertising, whether it's print, radio, or television. Also, I would consider the internet as paid media, and you've got unpaid media, which is basically publicity, press relations, those types of things. Then, of course, get out the vote. So those are different ways you can contact them. You may have to contact them more than once, for maybe you're going to go knock on their doors twice, or you're going to knock on the door and get out the vote, and they're going to see at least three or four advertisements here, one on the radio. That's how you put the mixture together. Absentee voters. Most people don't realize it, but in California, you have to mount a seventh campaign for the most part. That's basically the kickoff of your election cycle for the gen the primary, the general. So you want to get to your absentee voters. Lists are available from every in every county. Uh, many have, a lot of absentee voters are elderly, but a lot of them just decided they didn't want to walk down and, and vote. So you want to get to the ones that you need to get to. If, you, if there's, for instance, if there's a large or several large, or if you've got an area that's got uh, retirement homes, you want to get into the retirement home, and you want your people in there to talk to people in the retirement homes, because when the absentee ballot comes out, they're going to get their ballots like everybody else. 
when absentee ballots are coming out originally, you want to get your advertising on the air. You want, you want them to know you're out there and know what you're doing. You don't want it to happen after the absentee ballots because the first couple of weeks is when most of the people decide who they're voting for. So they're voting early. That's election number one. Uh, let's see. Also, uh, we see the absentees are already out for Sam Blakesley's special election. And so if you can see, I think, the, I think Chris said it pretty much, Curtis said it pretty much passed making calls. But I think if you want to get involved in election, that's a good one to get involved in because that's when you can win very quickly. And if you have an experience, if you've never experienced a win, it's infectious. And if you can experience a win prior to going into the general election, you want that feeling again. So if you have an opportunity, Sam's people are back there. It's over and done in two weeks. Give them whatever time you can. And uh, you might just enjoy yourselves. <laughs> what, what is the district where Maldonado is no longer there? That's Blakesley. Well, that's it? I yes, that's the one. He's replacing Maldonado. Can, can I ask one other question? Yeah. It's, it's sort of about <laughs> the future. After this election and before 2012, the whole state by a citizen group, not by the legislature. They also might be, say, that same group reapportioned all of California's congressional seats. There's an initiative on the ballot. And if we vote for it, it means all of the Congress will be reapportioned by this same citizen group. What do insiders like yourself, what do you predict that this citizen group will do to remake California? Uh, that's a whole separate. Uh, I'm not well informed enough to make an informed decision on that, but I would suggest, if that's an interest of yours, that you start digging up information on that and spreading it around because you're going to have you're going to have expertise you can use. A citizen lobbying group is not much different than what we're talking about. You need to get in these people's face and you need to stay there and you need to find out who's doing what. You know, be, don't let it happen in, in the dark. That's basically you know. People talk about transparency, but there's nothing like shining a light on, a, on an issue. And if you can shine the light on this, get more people involved, you might be surprised what you can do. But if you, uh, I'll give you one of my cards. If you send me an email, I'll be more than happy to do a little research on it and see if I can come up with a, with a reasonable answer. As I mentioned earlier, get out the vote campaign can have three to five percent of the candidates vote total on election day, so it's critical. Basically, it's calling voters, identifying voters, organizing and providing transportation if necessary to the polls. Calling voters to remind them in the morning or in today's election day, please get out and vote. Calling them around noon to remind them, did you get out and vote? And what you're looking for is a commitment. Oh, yeah, I'll be out there at 2 o'clock and vote. Then you call them in the evenings. Hey, it was 2, two o'clock when I did you get out and vote? The idea is to get those people to the polls. And if you have to bug them like the mom, you know, or teacher or something like that to get in the polls to do that because every vote counts. And don't forget to vote yourself. It's amazing how many people are running around there on fire about 6, 6.30. Oh my God, I haven't voted yet. And they're working for a candidate. You know? So they have to get down and do that yourself. Uh, let's see. I mentioned that you voted for some factors. Winnable campaigns that are in the area that you should I think you should support Sam Blakesley, he was just mentioned again, he's running against Abel Maldonado. Two weeks, that's the big day for the special election. Anything you can do to help him could make a significant difference at this point. And you won't get a win under your belt. One notch goes a long way going into the November election. Larry Pegram, he's running against Roca for the city council this fall. He's, he's close enough that he can make a difference. Mike Washington running for a commission. There's nothing. And we need more conservatives on city and line. Pardon me? I'm sorry, supervisor. I was. I don't know how I got the commissioner in there. I was probably looking at the one above it. Bob Chandler, of course, is running for assembly, District 15. David Harper, Congress. I guess McDermott, you he can use all your help. And of course, Scott Kirkland is running against Mike Honda. He can use your help. Now, one thing to keep in mind is they need volunteers, and I hope everybody goes back and signs up to volunteer for one of these people. If you can only do work for an hour, write down, I can help for an hour on a Saturday, give them that much. Also, campaign financing is critical. 